This is the idea I visualized in my mind of a beautiful male figure doing a backflip or a dive where his body arches and goes backwards and over and his body doing this beautiful C-shape, this elegant, sensuous C-shape. That's what I wanted to capture. My work doesn't just mimic what the human body can do. I want the work to take the body to another level. So I change the piece. I curve it even more. The life cast I am making is used as the model for sculpting the final piece. When I pose the model, I want the model to portray the story that I'm trying to tell. You know you can do a cast of a person, but you have to get the emotion right because in the end you can sculpt the detail, but you cannot sculpt the emotion. This piece is part of a series of swimmers and bathers that I began working on in the late 70s. It is a piece I wanted to do for a long time. So once again, I turn to technology to scan my maquette into foam 13 feet high. But when I get the foam back, you still have to sculpt it. You only get foam, and the foam has no detail, no fingernails, no lines. It is at this point that I make changes in the pose, variations in the gestures, and also add all the little details to the entire piece. Conceptually, the biggest challenge is to portray the strength of the human spirit, from his emotion to his whole body. The feeling of the pose, his perfection, all elements that make it a wonderful piece of art and not just a man jumping off a diving board. I'll be making an edition of three. This model will be exhibited in the 2013 Venice Biennale in Giardini under the patronage of the Consiglio Europeo dell'Arte and the Muscarelli Museum of Art. The first piece will be on permanent exhibition in Riverfront Green Park in Peekskill, New York, and the second one will debut in my New York Spring solo show at Jim Kemner Fine Art. Okay, we're in Excalibur Foundry today, and we're here to see the process of making the wax for the diver. With this piece, I want to show the human spirit, how we strive to get ahead, how we drive and work hard to achieve something incredible. The dive represents the power to succeed, the dive, the struggle to survive. Making a sculpture that is hyper-realistic is not just captured by outward perception, not merely defined by physical forms and spatial fields that blend together, but also by inner relationships composed as much by the unseen as by the seen. In the end, it's like a melting pot where physicality, sensuality, perfection, and vitality become one. I'm also working with a structural engineer who designed an intricate steel armature and pedestal. It would have been easier to work life-size, but I wanted it as a public work for outdoors. Therefore, it had to be monumental size, proportionate to its surroundings. After two years and approximately 8,000 hours of casting, enlarging, mold making, and foundry work, with constant detailing, with the help of more than 16 people, the Golden Mean is finally ready for installation on the riverfront of the Hudson Valley Center for Contemporary Art in Peekskill, New York. The golden mean describes proportion, but it is not merely a term, it's an actual ratio. To Aristotle, it was the desirable middle between two extremes. To the Greeks, it was beauty. John Keats said, beauty is truth, truth is beauty. To lean too far in either direction might cause one to fall, but to achieve the golden mean is to strive for perfect balance, the path to enlightenment and virtue. the incredible reception the city of Peekskill and the people of Peekskill have given it. When I told Peekskill that I was going to take it out 
to send it to Venice. They told me they had raised the money through a grant and through the people of Peekskill to buy it. So that was the third amazing thing that happened, and they're dedicating it to the city in September.